This conference will now be recorded. Hello everyone. We are starting a new chapter which is hydrocarbon. So first we will know what is hydrocarbons and after that we will see the classification of hydrocarbons and then we will start alkenes. Hydrocarbon as the name suggests hydro and carbon. So here H and carbon these two are the elements that are only present. So these compounds compose entirely of carbon and hydrogen atoms and that is why they are the backbone of organic compounds because whenever we say organic compounds it is basically carbon compounds and to satisfy the valency of carbon there is presence of hydrogen and when there is no presence of heteroatoms like oxygen nitrogen sulfur there will be only carbon and hydrogen and that is why the name of these type of compounds are hydrocarbons now why they are important the reason is if we say uh, petroleum and natural gas, which has so many applications in our day to day life, they are the principal constituents of this petroleum and natural gas. So, petroleum and natural gas, these two are not any pure particular compound, they are a mixture of so many different types of hydrocarbons. But these are the principal constituents. Now, as application, if we say they serve as fuels, lubricants, as well as raw, raw materials for some other important. Uh, substances like plastic fiber rubber solvents explosive now this petrol diesel kerosene oil they are obtained by fractional distillation of petroleum and that is naturally found under the earth crust okay so from application point of view we can understand how important they are from another uh, way also we can say that they are present in trees and plants if we consider an example very good example is a carotenoid type of compounds so they are present as pigments and these pigments are called carotenes. So this is just one of the example of pigment and they occur in carrots and also green leaves. So here we have some examples of carotenoids, beta carotene, alpha carotene, lycopene and uh, their major sources are also mentioned in the right hand side. So you can see from their structure, this is the structure of lycopene. Here we have carbon and hydrogen only. This is a long chain, very large compound but there is only carbon and hydrogen, right? Then we have alpha carotene, we have beta carotene. So th these two are having same type of structure, only difference you can see in this uh, ring. In case of lutein, it is having uh, heteroatoms. So except lutein, if you consider the other three structures, they are actually very good example of uh, hydrocarbons that we can get naturally. More than 95% of natural crude rubber is hydrocarbon polymer which is basically chain like molecule consisting of many units linked together so as they are polymer there will be some monomer but uh, these monomers are hydrocarbon so when they are these monomer units are linked together the total molecule that we are getting that is the polymer that is also hydrocarbon so 98 percent of natural rubber is hydrocarbon polymer so from this discussion we can understand how important are hydrocarbon compounds in our life. Classification of hydrocarbons. So they can be classified uh, if we consider from historical point of view, 19th century chemists classified hydrocarbons either as aliphatic or aromatic. So these two are the broad classification. But it is on the basis of what? It is on the basis of their sources and properties. So the source from which we are getting hydrocarbon, depending on the type of source, we can have either aliphatic or aromatic, fine? Now, aliphatic is derived from the Greek word alipha, which means fat, and fat or oil molecules are the source for aliphatic hydrocarbon. So that is why the name is, as the source, alipha means fat, and uh, these are the source of aliphatic compounds. So that is why uh, the name is such, right? Then what is the source of aromatic compounds? First of all, try to understand the meaning of the word aroma. Aroma means odor. And this type of hydrocarbons, that is I'm talking about aromatic hydrocarbons, their sources, chemical, we can get them by chemical degradation of certain pleasant smelling plant extract. So it may be leaves, it may be flower, it may be some fruit, but sources some pleasant smelling plant extract. So they are having some special aroma uh, in this type of hydrocarbons we can get and that is why these class of compounds are called aromatic. 
Now, though these are based on the source, aliphatic and aromatic, these two terminologies that we are using, that is based on the source. And nowadays, these two terms are still under use. So these terms, aliphatic, aromatic, are retained. They are still under use in modern terminology. But the classification nowadays, it is mainly done on the basis of structure, not on the basis of origin. So it's, it means what? Though we have separated these two, uh, we have these two separate class of hydrocarbons and that we have done on the basis of their source. But nowadays, it is done mainly on the basis of structure. So for aliphatic compounds, there is some structural features. And for aromatic, aromatic hydrocarbons, there is another type of structural feature. So that structural features are also different. Not that that uh, only the source from which we are getting these type of compounds that is different, but their structural features are also different. Okay. So on the basis of that, nowadays, uh, we use these two terminologies. Here we have this classification. So hydrocarbon, the first classification we are doing, aliphatic hydrocarbon and aromatic hydrocarbon, which is also called uh, arenes. And in bracket, it is mentioned unsaturated. Now, what is unsaturated? Saturated, we'll see that later. But right now, just try to understand that they are unsaturated. And very good example for aromatic hydrocarbon is benzene. Now, details of these aromatic hydrocarbons, why, how to know that these compounds will be aromatic? Uh, there are actually some uh, special rules. Uh, if the compound is following, then only you can say they are aromatic. But what are those rules? That we'll see separately when we will focus on aromatic compounds. So one by one, we will uh, study all the topics in this uh, unit, which is hydrocarbon. So first, it, we will start with alkane then alkene, then alkyne, and after that, there will be discussion related to aromatic compounds. But here, just see the term. The main two classification, we have aliphatic, and then we have aromatic, under which very good example is benzene. Now, this is unsaturated because here we have CC double bond. So whenever you will have CC double bond or CC triple bond, you will call them unsaturated. But if we have CC single bond only, then it will be saturated. Fine. Now, under aliphatic, we can have acyclic or cyclic. Now, this is clearly understood that here we will have open chain structure. But for cyclic, there will be ring type of structure. Now, acyclic and cyclic, under acyclic also, you can have alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes. And under cyclic also, you can get these three. But now you have to use this extra prefix which is cyclo. So now if it is cyclic as well as it is uh, having properties like alkanes, you will call them cycloalkane. You will call this cycloalkene, you will call it cycloalkynes. Right? So that is why it is uh, mentioned in this way that under cyclic and acyclic for both we can get alkane, alkene, alkynes. So as if we are getting total six. Under acyclic, alkane, alkene, alkyne. And under cyclic, cycloalkane, cycloalkyl, and cycloalkyne. Now, this will be saturated. This is actually unsaturated. This is also unsaturated. And very good example under uh, acyclic and alkane is ethane. Ethane is CH3, then CH3. Here you can see there is no CC double bond. And ethane is eth that means two carbon but now we will have a double one and that is why the number of hydrogen is reduced and in case of alkyne again we are getting unsaturation but now it is triple bond so that is why the separate category hc triple bond ch so gradually the number of hydrogens are decreasing so these terms uh, now on the basis of structure rather than origin so hydrocarbons with carbon-carbon multiple bond, it may be CC double bond or CC triple bond. You will call them unsaturated hydrocarbon. And if it is only CC single bond, you will consider them as saturated hydrocarbons, right? Now we will see some examples. First, uh, under acyclic, there will be these three types. These two are unsaturated. Then under cyclic, again, three types. So here we have alkane. 
this is CH4, this is C2H6, this is C3H8. Next, we have cycloalkanes. So this is for four member. Now it will be C4H8, then it will be C5H10, and this is C6H12. So there is difference in the ratio of carbon and hydrogen. If you consider alkane, you can use the general formula CN H2N plus 2, but that you cannot use in, in case of cycloalkanes because in cycloalkanes, the terminals are actually connected. There is not, nothing open, no open chain structure. So as terminals are connected, now the number of hydrogens are reduced and it will be like CN H2N. Okay, so for cyclic and uh, that is cyclic alkane, which is nothing but cycloalkane. CNH2N, the general way if you want to write the formula. And for alkanes, it is CNH2N plus 2. So that is why when it is C2, H will be 6. Because 2N plus 2, when N is 2, is 6. Fine. Then for alkenes, here we have 3 carbon and here we have 4 carbon. So when it is 3 carbon, it is C3. H6. Now this is again C and H2N. So you can find similarity with uh, cycloalkane. And for cycloalkanes, here we have same type of ring, but now extra that is CC double bonds has to be there. Otherwise, why we are calling it cycloalkanes, right? Now you will see number of hydrogens are even reduced. C4H6, C5, H8. So it is not Two. In the previous case, T and H2N, cycloalkane I'm talking about, but now it is even the hydrogen numbers are reduced. And that has to be because now you have some unsaturation. And this will be C6. Now come to alkyne. Here we have three carbon alkynes. So it is C3 and H4. So now it is C in H2N minus 2 okay and alkynes the next one is c4 and h6 so 4 in uh, 4 if you put in 2n minus 2 it will be 8 minus 2 that is 6 so in this way formulas you can understand and cycloalkynes now it is a little difficult that uh, the examples of cycloalkynes you will mostly get when the ring size is very large because when the ring size is very small suppose i am having five member ring and in five member ring if you put triple bond that is actually very difficult because for a triple bond the angle should be 180 degree but here the angle achievement of 180 degree angle is really difficult so that is why triple bond within ring it will hardly get when it is small size ring but if it is large size ring now the flexibility of the ring is very high and this angle now it can approach 180 degree easily uh, easy is easier way so that is why for cycloalkynes though we have here the structure but this will not be very stable right and here it is c6 and you also see here we in the previous two cases we have taken four member ring five member ring six member ring but now we have started with six because in four member ring you cannot have three uh, that is cc triple bond right so it is six seven and then eight so it is c6 H8. So see, now the hydrogens are even reduced. When in case of cycloalkene with 6 carbon, C6H10, right? But now C6H8. So two hydrogen will be even lesser. So in this way, uh, general uh, formula for cycloalkene or alkene, then alkene, alkyne, cycloalkene, cycloalkyne, all these different types of compounds you can get. Classification for uh, now we will deal with aromatic compounds. Now for aromatic compounds, they are those that are significantly more stable than their Lewis structure would suggest. Now Lewis structure, the very uh, that is the most common example that we take for aromatic hydrocarbon is benzene. Now I have drawn here three CC double bonds, right? And there will be hydrogens. Though the structure looks like this, but actually the position of this CC 
double bonds they are not fixed they change their position because of resonance and again i am saying i will not deal with this in detail right now so this type of resonance is possible and that is why there is some extra stability so that it is mentioned here those that are significantly more stable than you can expect from their normal lewis structure so if you simply consider that these three cc double bonds their positions are fixed and if you are cons that is one case and suppose there is another case where there is resonance involved and uh, double bonds they are changing their positions and you are getting some uh, average of the resonance structure you have to take then the stability obviously now it is more because when there is resonance involved stability will be high so just this much we will uh, rest that is we will limit our discussion because details will be uh, under aromatic uh, hydrocarbon that we will deal with later this possess some special stability because of this uh, resonance and that you can get in aromatic compounds right now for aromatic compounds also two possibilities are there first of all when you have some specific benzene ring present in the compound so in this three example see benzene rings are present the so first one is methyl substituted benzene this one is as if two benzene rings connected together but if you individually see you have this uh, benzene ring right then here also you have benzene ring so these are called benzenoid aromatic but there are some aromatic compounds they are also aromatic but because of the absence of benzene type of ring we call them non benzenoid okay but still they are aromatic because when you are calling some species aromatic there are some specific rules that we that must be fulfilled that must be present then only you can call them aromatic so those rules are actually fulfilled here so even if uh, there is no aromatic benzene ring but still they are aromatic okay so these are classified as either a rings which contain benzene ring as a structural unit or they may be also non benzenoid aromatic hydrocarbons which possess special stability but there is a lack of benzene ring as structural unit but the special stability that is always present whether it is benzenoid aromatic or non benzenoid aromatic the classification of hydrocarbons serves as an aid now overall this try to understand this conclusion we have done some classification right in some cases you have seen there is cc double bond in some cases there is cc triple bond sometimes they are having ring structure sometimes they are having open structure so these are the several ways we have done the classification but remember when you will you will actually deal with different types of organic compounds you will see that this classification of hydrocarbons why we have done it why we have done this classification we have done it for our uh it is it will help us to understand the structural features so it is as an aid in associating structural features with properties but don't think that it does not require that a particular substance be assigned to a single class so what it the statement is trying to say suppose i am talking about alkyne now alkyne means what there must be cc triple bond and if you are having any organic compound suppose you have organic compound hc triple bond c h so you have cc triple bond so you will call it alkyne very simple then you have uh, benzene ring so you will consider it as aromatic so these are the separate classification but it may be also that these two features separate features may be present in the same molecule how so if i simply remove this carbon hydrogen bond and with this bond suppose there is a ch2 and then then there is a benzene ring now what will happen in this molecule because of presence of both these separate structural features you have cc double bond you also have aromatic ring so this molecule will show the properties of alkynes it will also show the properties of benzene okay so though we have done some classification but that doesn't mean you will not get uh, anything mixed now uh, some extra things also i can add here suppose you also have a cc double bond here that may be also there so these are the uh, various ways we can mix different structural units 
So it does not require that particular substance will always be assigned to a single class. So it may be uh, assigned to a more than class. So this compound, I can call it, it is alkyne as well as it is aromatic. So a particular part of this molecule is alkyne, a particular part is of this molecule is uh, aromatic, right? So these are the classification. Now we will start with alkene. Now in alkene, we have only carbon carbon single bond so there is no question of unsaturation so this is their uh, unique property there will be only cc single bond now if that is the case start with single carbon this is the simplest alkane possible and the name is methane meth that is the root word for single carbon condensed formula is like this just like molecular formula and if you write the full structure by uh, properly drawing all the carbon hydrogen bond because here you do not have any cc bond now the next molecule c2h6 ch3 ch3 so as if now you have added a ch2 unit isn't it because when you add ch2 unit with methane why i am saying ch2 unit because it is not a separate compound so and both sides i have written some bonds also now what you get you get two carbon and six hydrogen similarly if you add another methylene unit it is called methylene unit methylene ch2 now what you get another ch2 you have added now you get c3 h 8 so in this way you can see it is just a difference of ch2 okay and also uh, the structural formula as well as the contest formula everything is uh, written here so in this way when you are reaching 10 c10 it will be called decan and all the names are ending with a because they are alkane right methane is the first member of the alkane family and the successive members gradually we will increase the number of carbons and the members are differing from the previous member by a methylene group so they form the homologous series because we know when we talk about homologous series there is actually difference between two molecules by the unit ch2 okay so that is why this will be uh, creating a homologous series and the look at the general formula which we have already seen in the previous slide here n value will be integer so if you put n value as one when n is one you get ch4 right when you put n value equal to 2, you get C2H6. When you put n value equal to 8, you get C8. Then 2N16 plus 2, that means it will be 18. Look at this, C888. So these are the um, initial idea we have now about the alkenes. Structure and conformation of alkenes. So in alkane, there is actually two types of bond. Either you have CC bond and also you have carbon-hydrogen bond. Now this carbon-carbon bond and carbon-hydrogen single bonds, their average bond lengths are 154 for CC and 1110, uh, 110 pm picometer for carbon-hydrogen. And obviously the carbons are sp3 hybridized because you do not have any uh, double bond. So there is no unsaturation. There will be always sp3 hybridized. And one more important point, it is mentioned as average bond length because though I am saying it is 154, but the same CC bond that in different types of alkanes, there may be a slight difference depending on uh, what structure you have taken. So if you have taken, uh, suppose you have taken ch3 ch3 which is ethane then the cc bond length and when you have taken ch3 ch2 ch3 that is the next uh, member then the cc bond length there may be slight difference so that is it is mentioned here average bond length similarly the carbon hydrogen bond length that you will have in this molecule it may be slightly different in the second molecule and also the carbon hydrogen bond in the two terminal and the carbon hydrogen bond in the middle part that may be also slightly different. So that is why always you use the term average bond length for CC and CH because compound to compound it may vary. And there is always sp3 
hybridization. So for carbon, if you consider its uh, valence shell electronic configuration, it is 2s2, 2p2. Now, when it is in excited state, one electron from S, now it will be transferred to P, right? So 2s, 2p. And if there, there, there is sp3 hybridization, now 1s and 3p, it will undergo hybridization and it will create four separate sp3 hybrid orbitals. And in each sp3, there will be presence of single electron, right? So sp3 hybridized carbon, it will have four half filled sp3 orbital. So all these are sp3. And they will form four sigma bonds. Four sigma bonds, either with carbon or with hydrogen. Now these sigma bonds, they will be directed towards corner of a regular tetrahedron. So try to imagine tetrahedron. You can see in A, there is tetrahedron and here we have taken the simplest alkane that is the first member CH4. You will have total four carbon hydrogen bond. So this four carbon hydrogen bond we have placed in the tetrahedron, right? You can also think it in this way. Suppose we have a cube like this. Now, in this case, if you put two atoms here and two atoms in the alternate positions, and if you have carbon here, so these positions, if you add, and then you, if you, the shape that you will finally have, that will actually be this type of tetrahedron. So it will, uh, if you draw it starting with a cube, it will help you to understand what is actually tetrahedron means. And here, all these angles, this angle, that is all the carbon hydrogen carbon angle, always it is 109.5 degrees. So this is the standard angle we get for sp3 hybridization, 109 degree, 28 minute. And bond length is given 1.09 angstrom, which is uh, in picometer, it is 110. When you convert to angstrom, it will be 1.10 or 1.09, close value, fine. Now a sigma bond between two carbon atoms, Suppose just take methane and there is a carbon. So why I have taken ethane? Because this is the simplest alkane where you can get at least one CC bond. Because in CH4, you do not have any CC bond. There is only one carbon. Now this CC bond here, carbon will use one is its sp3 orbital and the second carbon will also use sp3. So this bond is formed by two sp3 orbital, right? Now in this case, the sigma bond between two carbon atoms is formed by the overlap of sp3 hybrid orbital of each carbon along their internuclear axis. So as this is a sigma bond along their internuclear axis, we are getting this bond. And the electron distribution within the molecular orbital. So the new MO that you will get in this MO, the electron distribution is basically cylindrically symmetrical along this internuclear axis between the nuclei. So whatever electron density we will have in this MO, it will be cylindrically symmetrical along the internuclear axis. Okay. Now why we are discussing about CC bond? Because next we are going to discuss the rotation of the CC bond, which is very common in case of alkanes. And that is the reason we get some different types of conformations of alkanes. We already know this term conformation. Uh, in the previous unit, that is unit 12, where that is the basic of organic chemistry. There we have already seen what, the, what is the meaning of conformation. Now we will have uh, different, we will see the different types of conformations that are possible in alkane. But before that, we have to understand that why CC bond rotation, it is so, it, it is easier. If you consider any CC double bond or a triple bond, it is not easy. Why? Because when you have CC double bond, there is one sigma bond and there is one pi bond. That means this type of uh, overlap of two sp2 hybrid orbital will occur because now it is sp2, not sp3. But there is also sidewise overlap and that is why pi bond is formed. Because of this sidewise overlap, now the CC bond rotation is not so easy as you can expect in case of CC single bond. Because when these CC bonds are rotating, these two pi orbital, they will not be in the same plane. So there will be some, that is this double bond will be destroyed. 
but that is not possible so that is why cc double bond there is a rotation along the cc double bond that is difficult but it is very common in case of single bond so that's why we always talk about conformation of alkenes we never talk about conformation for alkene or alkyne because in those two cases you have some p p orbital pi bond formation and which will uh, be the hindrance for cc bond rotation okay so rotation about carbon carbon single bond involves very small energy barrier look at the value it is 1 to 20 kilojoule per mole there is a, a range because it may vary you have different types of alkene De uh, that is if you talk about octane that is also alkene if you talk about propane that is also alkene but structurally they are so different so that is why we have a range 1 to 20 but whatever it is the value is not very high now why we still have this amount of value it is because of weak repulsive interaction between the adjacent bonds so suppose if you consider uh, the sawhorse formula for methane uh, sorry for ethane so in this case you see these two ch ch bond they are actually eclipsed to each other now we know what is sawhorse what is newman that we have uh, discussed already in the unit uh, basic principles of organic chemistry that is a unit 12. so here we know that uh, because of this uh, why we are having this type of energy barrier 1 to 20 though it is very small value but still why we have this it is because of weak repulsive interaction between the adjacent bonds so though uh, these two bonds if you consider there will be some uh, repulsive interaction there is some electron density present in this bond also electron density present in this bond and these two are eclipsed to each other right so when these two bonds are eclipsed to each other there will be some weak repulsion why i am saying weak because they are not very close to each other but still there will be some repulsive interaction okay so that is the reason why we have this type of energy barrier value 1 to 20. the increase in energy resulting from eclipsing groups so here we have these CH bonds. So this CH bond is eclipsed to this. This CH is eclipsed to this, right? So I have drawn this sawhorse as if all the bonds are eclipsed. You can also draw the alternative structure where you will have no eclipsing. So as if I have rotated these CC bonds. So this, if I am writing it as A hydrogen, B hydrogen, C. Okay. So now here as if b is here a is here and c is here so the positions are changed right so it is basically 60 degree rotation and now you can see there is no eclipse so when they are in eclipsing uh, positions the increase in energy obviously occurs there will be more energy in the first case than the second one the increase in energy resulting from the eclipsing of the groups on adjacent carbons that is a repulsive interaction obviously in eclipsing groups there will be more repulsive interaction compared to the non-eclipsing groups and this is known as torsional strain okay now try to understand the difference between steric strain and torsional strain steric strain is basically a very general term okay so here we have newman of two structure so what molecule is this it is not ethane because see in the front carbon we have CHT CH2. In the back carbon, again CH2 CH3. So this is basically butane. And if you consider this CC bond, that is, if you take this CC bond, suppose this is the front carbon, this is the back carbon. So in the front carbon, you have two hydrogen, one methyl, back carbon, you have two hydrogen, one methyl, and this is a new man. Now, if you draw this type of structure where this methyl is in eclipsing position with this H, then we have two eclipsing H, again one H, one CST. So, in this case, we will have torsional strain between two hydrogen atom, that is in this position, and also between CST H for these two. But if you uh, now rotate the back carbon in such a way, front carbon, we have not disturbed, but if you rotate this back carbon, that is CC bond rotation. So this group is now coming here. Now these two groups are eclipsing position. Now there will be steric as well as torsional, but 
only torsional for these two H because two hydrogen atoms are very smaller in size. But if you have two methyl groups in eclipsing positions, it is, there is obviously torsional strain will be there because that is all about eclipsing groups. But you will also have some steric strain. But in the previous uh, arrangement of the atoms, there is no steric strain. It is only present in the second case because in the first picture. Uh, you have do not have two CHT together. You just have H and M, which will not create any steric problem. So steric hindrance is basically a broad definition. It means that uh, when atoms or groups are close to each other, especially larger atoms and groups, and there is increase in energy because of this repelling electron cloud. But torsional strain, that is also a type of steric hindrance, but it is uh, a smaller term. It is not so broad term, right? Because steric hindrance is broad term, it is more general term. Torsional strain, on the other hand, is specifically only for the eclipsing groups. Okay. So you will not have it if there is no eclipsing groups. Now, rotation above CC bond allows the alkane molecules to have different relative arrangement. Here, uh, consider this first picture. This HA, I have just this is the initial position of HA and I have rotated it 60 degree. Now you are getting the position of HA. It is shifted, right? But suppose instead of 60 degree, you are rotating a 2 degree or 3 degree or 4 degree or suppose 1.5 degree. So many things we can do. So rotation about CC bond allows the alkane molecules to have different relative arrangement of their atoms in space. So infinite number of arrangements are possible. We are here only seeing 60 degree. But it is not only restricted 60, you can rotate it to any angle, right? So because of this uh, rotation around CC bond, and uh, as we can get different types of relative arrangement, infinite number of momentary arrangements of the atoms possible in space. And that is obviously because of the rotation about the CC single bond. Now, whatever conformations we are getting, that is whatever uh, different arrangements we are getting because of this uh, rotation that you are doing about the CC bond. All these forms, we call them conformations. And the energy difference between two conformers, obviously it is not very high. Energy barrier, we know, we have seen it is already very smaller range, 1 to 20. So these molecules are called uh, conformations or you can also call them rotational isomers because by rotation you are getting this or it is also called rotamers. Though conformation term is mostly important, uh, you cannot have these isomers, that is individual presence, we cannot detect so easily because the energy difference between each form is so small, you cannot detect, uh, that is you cannot separate the molecules. They are always uh, changing to each other. This is what is going on, okay? So that is why, uh, the better term is conformation, but these two terms are also used. Now, different conformations of alkanes, we will see by taking the simplest alkane, actually not the simplest alkane, because the simplest alkane is CH4, where CC bond is not present. So you have to take the next member, which is C2H6. So we'll see, choose C2H6, and we'll try to see the different conformations that are possible. So here we have taken ethane, Conformations of ethane, we are going to see. Suppose the front carbon is uh, blue, which is number one, and the back carbon is two. And here we have eclipse conformation because these two CH eclipsed, then these two CH are eclipsed, these two are eclipsed. Now, if your eye position is here, if you are looking at this molecule from this position, now it will be something like this. So, equivalent structure is there. And this is sawhorse. I'm writing here X. Now you are changing it to Newman. So the front carbon is with blue and the back carbon is pink color. That is the circle. So I'm not going into details of how to draw sawhorse Newman because that we have already covered in the previous scene. So this is all the CH bonds are eclipsed. And another extreme possibility. So here we have only the extreme possibility. One is ex eclipsed, where all the CH bonds are uh, as if overlapping. And we have another extreme, which is staggered conformation. Now, in this staggered conformation, now this CH bond, it is having in, in antiposition this CH. 
Then this CH in its antiposition, we have another carbon hydrogen. So as if we have rotated the CC bond. So front carbon we have not disturbed, but if you rotate it 60 degree, now this H will come at this position. This H will come at this position like this. Okay. And this will be the Newman. So obviously the staggered form that is the staggered conformation is more stable. So the extreme conformations are staggered and eclipsed. And in between these two extremes, all the other arrangements that are possible, we call them as Q forms. So there will be several types of Q forms possible. However, there is no change. Though we are doing all this rotation, we are having different conformation. But remember, there is no change in the basic structure of the ethane molecule because we have not broken any bonds. CC bonds are still there, CH bonds are still there. So why the basic structure will be disturbed? Obviously, there will be no change. And different bond angles are also, bond lengths will also remain same. There will be no effect on bond length. There will be no effect on the bond angle. What I'm trying to say by bond angle, this angle I'm talking about. So these angles, it will uh, always be same. And that is according to sp3 hybridization. But remember, there is another angle, which is this torsional angle, or we call also as dihedral angle. So don't confuse with uh, that is C carbon hydrogen carbon angle. I'm not talking about that. That carbon uh, HCH angle you can get, or this HCC angle, all these angles you can get according to SPT average. But dihedral angle is something different. Dihedral angle is the angle between these two bonds. So here you can understand this is zero degree. But now the back carbon hydrogen, if I am marking it as HA, now the position of HA is here. So this ACH, it is still in its position, but this angle is changed from zero to 60. So these angles are actually called dihedral angle. If you again uh, move this HA, it will come at this position. This is a new position of HA. And now the angle with this HA, it will be 120 degree. Again, if you rotate it, HA will come at this position and now the dihedral angle will be 180 degree. So in this way, from zero, uh, as it is a round shape, so ultimately it will end at 360 degree. Now look at this uh, energy diagram. In the y-axis, you can see energy in kilocalorie per mole is mentioned. So suppose this is a starting point, number one, where the CH bonds are eclipsed. Now two hydrogens out of six, it is in red color because you just have to focus on this red hydrogen because with respect to this red hydrogen, we will decide the dihedral angle. So here the dihedral angle is only zero degree. But suppose keeping the front carbon uh, fixed, if you rotate the back carbon here, the age, this age, now it will come at 60 degree position. So in the x-axis, we have all the angles. So when it is at 60 degree, that is the dihedral angle is 60 degree, it will be creating a staggered form. Now, if you move another 60 degree, that is starting from origin, now it is obviously 120 degree. Now the position of H, it will come here, right? Because if you just focus on the red hydrogen, this is the angle they're having. Now look at this energy value. That is, this is a, that is a zero point for energy. So this gap is basically three kilocalorie per mole. If you convert it to kilojoule, it will be something around 12 because from kilocalorie to joule, it is uh, a four times high, okay? So three kilocalorie per mole, uh, that is the energy for the eclipsed, eclipsed form. So this is eclipsed, this is also eclipsed. These two eclipse, if you do not mark the hydrogen as red, these two will appear just same. So that is why we have marked it so that you can understand the difference between these two eclipse. Actually, there is no difference. Only we are trying to understand the dihedral length. So this is 180, uh, 120 degree. Again, if you are rotating this edge, it will come at this position. And now you are again getting another type of staggered, which is after 180 degree. So at 60 degree, you are getting staggered. At 180 degree, you are getting staggered. Then again, if you are rotating 60, 180 plus 60, we're getting 240. So H and this root uh, 2 
red h this angle is 240 fine again 60 degree so all these gaps are basically 60 degree so at 300 degree you are getting another staggered finally it is reaching to its original position so it is again 360 degree and dihedral angle it is always denoted by this type of sign fine so here we have seen all the conformations of ethan and remember if we consider stability staggered form is more stable because you if you look at this energy profile diagram carefully all the staggered form they are at the minimum energy these are the minimum energy point and all the eclipsed form their positions is here so compared to zero now their energies are high but in between these two extreme energy point this is for eclipse this is for staggered in between whatever form you will have all of them will be skew so this is the energy order staggered then skew then eclipse fine next we'll go to nomenclature and isomerism of alkenes the first three member that is methane, ethane, propane. In these three cases, you cannot have any isomer. Isomerism is not possible because there is only one way in which you can arrange these carbon atoms. You cannot have any branching. So the first ice uh, member where from you can start isomerism, it is basically the next member, which is butane. Okay. So if we consider butane, uh, that is C4, H10. So for butane, what are the different possibilities we can have? It will be either N-butane, that is the simplest one, where there is no branching, or it can be isobutane. Okay. So N-butane and isobutane, what is the difference? First of all, isogroups what it means that you have to know so when you have this type of grouping this is the connection point and this is the group it is called iso fine similarly when uh, that is this is called isopropyl group and why i am saying isopropyl because total number of carbon in this group is uh, three so it is isopropyl but if this type of groups are present in butane you will call them isobutane. So N-butane is the simplest structure where all the carbons, there is no branching, but when it is isobutane, it is something like this. So see here we have this CH3 whole to CH unit. So this unit is basically this unit, right? This is the connection point for this part. So as you have this unit, so we are calling it iso. Okay, so this is isobutane, and uh, what will be for the next one, which is C5H12. Now, in this case, you will have first of all N pentane, then you will have isopentane, where iso group will be there, and you can have one more possibility. It is called neopentane. Now, what is neo? So let me draw. N pentane is simple. There is no branching. Isopentane, this grouping must be there. But as you have done this grouping, in the longest chain, there will be only four carbon. What about neo? In case of neo, there is actually this is the group. It is called neo. So in general, if I write, it is basically Me3C. So whenever you will have this type of grouping, uh, you can uh, consider it as, uh, that is neo term you can use, okay? However, higher members, so these are for uh, four member, uh, four carbon, this is five carbon. Higher members can have more than one structure leading to constitutional isomers or structural isomers. Now that means difference in connectivity. So here you can see the connectivities are different. Here we have uh, no branching. Now we have branching here. So connectivity is obviously uh, different. Okay, sorry. I'll also show it for the next member, which is C6H14. So these type of questions are also very common that it will 
tell you to draw all the isomers possible for this alkene. So here I will just focus on that is with this formula, whatever open structures are possible that I will draw. Now a simple system you can follow when you will actually draw this. So what you will do as it is C6 first, you will draw the simplest one that is possible. That is where there is no branching. So simply draw it one, two, three, four, five, six. Now the second possibility is just reduce the parent chain to one carbon less. Now it will be five carbon and put one methyl substituents because total number of carbon you have to make it six. So this is the methyl substituent. Now the next possibility again parent chain keeping it five. So both are basically parent chain five. This is six. Now the position of this methyl you can make it here. So position is changed. This is two methyl pentane. This is three methyl pentane, right? Now the fourth possibility is reduce the parent chain. So with five parent chain, your carbon parent chain, you cannot do anything extra. Now come to when it is only four, you will have two methyl substituents. Now the two methyl substituents you can place at the same position or you can place at different position. So under four carbon chain, you are getting again two. So total five isomers are possible. If you do the same thing, just try it as practice. So C7 H16. So the next isomer C7 H16, you will have basically total nine isomers possible. Just practice it, practice it yourself. Just test it whether you can draw all the structures. Okay. So here we have this type of iso grouping. So you can call it also Xen. And in this case, we have this type of uh, neo. Here also we have one iso. Okay. And if you consider IUPAC name at two position, one, two, three, four, this two, two dimethyl butane. Next. Now we will have to know uh, what is secondary, tertiary, and quaternary primary. Based upon the number of carbon atoms attached to a carbon atom. So in hydrocarbon, carbon may be attached to hydrogen only. Now only attached to hydrogen that you can see only in which case you see it only in case of methane but when you move, move to next member now there is some cc bonds also so what you have in hydrocarbon you have cc bonds you have ch bonds now particular carbon how this particular carbon is attached to how many carbon based on that we can have this type of uh, type a different category carbon atom which is attached to only one carbon atom that is called primary or one degree. And obviously, if that is the case, terminal carbons will always be primary. Terminal carbon means, suppose I'm drawing butane. This is a terminal carbon. And terminal carbon is not attached to more than one carbon. It is attached to only one carbon. So that is why it will always be primary. Carbon atom attached to two carbon, it is called secondary. So suppose any carbon atom, when it is attached to two carbon, I'm talking about this carbon it will be called secondary or two degree. Here you can see the examples, the first member where uh, these terminologies are not possible. But in the second case, if you focus on the red carbon, it is attached to the green carbon. This is the only CC uh, carbon with which it is attached. So it will be one degree. In the next one, if you focus on this red carbon, it is having two CC bonds. It is two degree. Now the red carbon in the third, uh, fourth picture, there is total three CC bonds, only one H. So gradually CC bonds are increasing, CH bonds are decreasing. This is three degree. And the last one, there is no carbon hydrogen. It is called quaternary. So tertiary carbon attached to three carbon atoms. Neo or quaternary carbon. In the previous slide, you have seen the mini, you already have seen the use of Neo. So this is a uh, quaternary carbon attached to uh, four carbons. Now you can see in this particular example, uh, all the different types of uh, carbons you can see simultaneously. So all the orange uh, CH3, they are actually primary, isn't it? Now the blue carbon here, it is quaternary because the blue carbon, it, there is no carbon hydrogen bond. And this red carbon that is attached to three carbon, that is why it is tertiary. So all the four examples you can see in the 
single compound. But remember, these terms you should not apply to pi bonded carbon atoms. It is only for sp3 hybridized carbon. It is not for pi bonded carbon because in case of pi bond, uh, to satisfy valency, there is always one CC double bond. Now these two positions, it may be carbon or hydrogen, but as you can see the definitions of secondary, primary, tertiary, it is not applicable for pi bonded carbon atoms. So it is only if you can apply in alkenes, not alkyne or alkene, fine. Okay, so nomen uh, isomerism we have seen, and nomenclature part will start in the next class because that will be completely different though the rules based on which we will have the nomenclature of iso alkenes uh, the rules in detail we have already seen in the previous unit so we will not go into the rules based on which uh, we will actually write the iupac name but we will study different types of examples for uh, nomenclature of alkenes using the rules that we have already studied in the previous unit and after seeing all the examples your idea will be clear that is how to do the nomenclature for alkenes we are ending the session here thank you for listening